Okay. Shalom lechulam. Hello to everybody. Shalom lechulam. <clears throat> okay. This webinar has two parts. In the first part, you're going to participate in a staged conversation between two Hebrew speakers where your job is to respond to my cues out loud. I won't be able to hear you. I won't be able to see you, but, but I want to imagine that I'm watching you <laughs> and expecting you to speak out loud. Even if you're not, even if you don't get everything of the pronunciation exactly right, work on it and work to improve it as we go along. So in this first part, there will be no visuals. Trust your sense of hearing. In the second part, we will have a look at the text of the conversation that we studied during the first part. Ready? Let's get started. <clears throat> Judy, a young mother who has made Aliyah in the past year, calls a taxi to take her to her home, to her home in Tel Aviv. As she piles her two kids into the back seat and follows them in, the driver says to her, good morning. Just listen. Boker tov. Here's the word for good. Listen and repeat. Be sure to speak out loud. Tov. Tov. And here's morning. Listen and repeat. Boker. Boker. Boker tov. How does the driver say to Judy, good morning? Boker Tov. He asks her, where to? Listen and repeat. Le'an. An. Le'an. He says, good morning. Where to? Try to say it for him. <clears throat> Boker Tov. Le'an. Le'an. Judy replies, to Tel Aviv. Listen and repeat. Le Tel Aviv. Le. How does the driver ask her, to where? Le'an. She replies, to Tel Aviv. Le Tel Aviv. Freshman Street. Listen and repeat. Rechov Frishman. <clears throat> Rechov. Chov. Re. Rechov. What's the Hebrew word for street? Rechov. Judy says, Frischman Street, or literally, Street Frischman. Rechov Frischman. How does the driver wish her a good morning? Boker Tov. Judy says, to Tel Aviv. Le Tel Aviv. Freshman Street. Rechov Frischman. Just as she says Freshman Street, there's a loud honking sound. The driver repeats, to where? Le'an. <coughs> Judy replies to Freshman Street. Le Rechov Frischman. Le Rechov Frischman. Judy speaks Hebrew well, but she's got an accent that gives away the fact that she's not from Tel Aviv. The driver asks her, Are you guys American? Just listen. Atem Amerikain? Here's the word he uses for you. Listen and repeat. Atem. Atem. 
Aten means you when speaking to more than one person. He says, are you guys American? Listen and repeat. Atem Amerikaim. Amerikaim. Kaim. Im. Mary. Ameri. Amerikaim. How does the driver ask Judy whether she and her kids are American? Atem Amerikaim? Hebrew has no word for is. So Atem Amerikaim means literally, you guys, American? Ask it again. Atem Amerikaim? Judy replies, yes. Listen and repeat. Ken. Ken. She says, yes, we are American. Listen and repeat. Ken, anachnu Amerikaim. Anachnu. Nu. Nachnu. A nachnu. Anachnu. Judy is saying literally, yes, we American. What's the Hebrew word for we or we are? Anachnu. How does the driver ask whether they're American? Atem Amerikaim? Judy replies, yes, we're American. Ken, anachnu Amerikaim. She says, we are. Anachnu. New immigrants. Just listen. Olim chadashim. Here's a special word for immigrants to Israel. Listen and repeat. Olim. Lim. Olim. Of course, this is related to the word aliyah. New immigrants. Listen and repeat. Olim chadashim. Chadashim. Chadash. Chadashim. The im ending on both the words olim and chadashim indicates that we're talking about more than one person. A single new immigrant, if he's a male, is, listen and repeat, ole chadash. A single female new immigrant is, listen and repeat, ola chadasha. Chadasha. But Judy and her kids are a group. So she says, we are new immigrants. Say it for her. Anachnu olim chadashim. Let's review. How does the driver wish his passengers a good morning? Boker tov. He asks Judy, to where or where to? Lean. She replies, to Tel Aviv. Le Tel Aviv. Freshman Street. Rechov Frischmann. When he starts driving, he asks, are you guys? 
אתם, are you guys American? אתם אמריקאים? אמריקאים. Judy replies, yes, we are. Okay, yes, we are. כן, אנחנו... New immigrants. עולים חדשים. חדשים. The driver smiles broadly and says, Welcome. Listen and repeat. ברוכים הבאים. Actually, we'll get to the, we're going to break it down. This, this expression means literally, blessed are the comers. Here's the word for blessed. Listen and repeat. ברוכים. חים. חים. If you're not used to these sounds, this could be a workout for your mouth. ברו, ברו, ברוכים. And here is the full expression. Listen and repeat. ברוכים הבאים. הבאים. באים. הבאים. The driver says to Judy and her kids, welcome. Bruchim <coughs> habayim. How does Judy say, we are new immigrants? Anachnu olim chadashim. עולים חדשים. אנחנו. The driver replies, Welcome. ברוכים הבאים. He asks, Where are you guys from? Just listen. מאיפה אתם? The word לאן. means literally where to, indicating movement. But the word איפה means simply where or where is. Listen and repeat. איפה? איפה? The driver asks, where are you guys from? Listen and repeat. מאיפה אתם? מה? מאיפה? מאיפה אתם? Which part of that means from? מה? He asks, where are you guys from? Or literally, from where are you? מאיפה אתם? Judy's son, Eden, replies, we are from Miami. Listen and repeat. אנחנו ממיאמי. ממיאמי. Here it's מי, and before it was מי, and it kind of depends on what, what the word is, if it's מי or מי, but they mean the same thing. The driver asks, where are you guys from? מאיפה אתם? Eden replies, we are from Miami. אנחנו ממיאמי. The driver repeats, welcome. ברוכים הבאים.
He adds, I love Miami. Just listen. Ani ohevet Miami. Here's the word for I. Listen and repeat. Ani. Ani. The driver says, I love, listen and repeat. Ani ohev. Hev. O. Ohev. He says, I love. Ani ohev. I love Miami. Listen and repeat. Ani ohev at Miami. Et Miami. Et. Did you notice the extra word et? There's no word for it in English. In Hebrew, we use it to show that an action is being done on something specific. In this case, the driver does the action of loving the specific place of Miami. But don't worry too much about why, you, why we use et. You'll learn it by example. How does the driver say, I love... Ani ohev. He says, I love Miami. Listen and repeat. Ani ohev et Miami. Et Miami. Judy smiles and says to him, and we, listen and repeat, ve anachnu, ve, and we, ve'anachnu, we love, listen and repeat, anachnu ohavim, havim, ohavim. She says, we love, Anachnu <clears> Ohavim. <throat> the driver says, I love Ani Ohev. I love Miami. Ani Ohev at Miami. Et Miami. Judy says, and we, ve'anachnu, love, ohavim, we love Tel Aviv. Listen and repeat. Anachnu ohavim et Tel Aviv. Et Tel Aviv. How did the driver wish them a good morning? Boker Tov. He asked, where to? Leanne to Tel Aviv. Le Tel Aviv. Judy replied, Yes, Freshman Street. Ken Rechov Frischman. He asked them, are you American? Atem Amerikaim? Judy replied, yes, we're new immigrants.
כן, אנחנו עולים חדשים. עולים חדשים. The driver said to them, welcome. ברוכים הבאים. ברוכים הבאים לישראל. He asked them, from where? מאיפה? מא... Where are you guys from? Or from where are you guys? מאיפה אתם? Eden replied, we're from Miami. אנחנו ממיאמי. ממיאמי. The driver said, I love Miami. אני אוהב את מיאמי. את מיאמי. Judy replied, and we love... ואנחנו אוהבים... We love Tel Aviv. אנחנו אוהבים את תל אביב. את תל אביב. אוהבים. אנחנו אוהבים את תל אביב. אוקיי, so that ends the first portion of the lesson, which is the speaking and listening. Now I'm going to open a, uh, a presentation, and this presentation assumes that you're familiar with the Hebrew alphabet. If you're not, that's okay, you'll, you'll still get something from the cues. Um, and in the review material, you'll have, you'll have options of learning the Hebrew alphabet with our automated tutorials, and also using the audio to, re to relearn or to review the words that you've learned here. So I'm going to open the presentation now. And um, Ali, if I could send, if you can give me the option of sharing. Try or, it now. What's that? Try, Try it now. now. Got it. Great. Okay. So how would you say good morning in Hebrew? Boker Tov. And if you've got a pen and paper, this is a good time to write this down. And if you know the cursive alphabet, use the cursive alphabet. Oops. Where to? How do you say that in Hebrew? Le'an. to le to Tel Aviv le Tel Aviv and if you don't get it if you're not able to write all this down now you can use the review materials street Rehov. this is a chet not a chaf
Are you guys one word? Atem. Are you guys American? Atem Americain. Yes. Ken. Notice that it's a kaf and not a kuf. We are American. Anachnu Amerikaim. And in Anachnu, it's a chet, not a chaf. And in Amerikaim, it's a kuf and not a kaf, because when we transcribe foreign words into Hebrew, then the k sound is a kuf, not a kaf, unless it's from Arabic. Anachnu. New immigrants. Olim Chadashim. It's not Chodashim, it's Chadashim. And it's a Chet. And here the first letter is an Ain, not an Aleph. A new immigrant, a male. Remember this? We didn't really focus on this so much. Ole Chadash. And I put the diacritic there, I put the Segol, so that you could uh, distinguish it from the next one, which is a new immigrant female. Ola Chadasha. Welcome to the family. Bruchim Habaim. You may recognize Bruchim as related to the word Baruch, blessed, also blessed is the singular, or Bracha, or Baruchu. All these are all about blessing and they're all over the prayers. Welcome to a male. Try to guess this one. This is bonus. This is extra credit. Baruch Haba. And we have this different looking chaf here because it's the end of a word. So it's the final chaf. And here, welcome to a female. Try to guess it. Brucha Haba'a. We have this ah with the hey ending on each of these words. Blessed is the one who comes. Brucha Haba'a. From me or me, depending on the word that it's modifying or preceding. Where are you guys from? Me'efuatem. We're from Miami. Anachnu mi Miami. Notice the mem over here in the beginning of the word, which is from. And here is the full 
name of the city, Miami, starting with the second man over here. I love Ani Ohev I love Miami, the driver says. Ani Ohev at Miami. These two dots make the a eh sound to distinguish it from the next one. Well, almost the next one. It is that word that we don't have in English. You'll have it, Miami. And we, says Judy, ve'anachnu, notice the vav at the beginning of the word as a prefix. In English, and is a separate word, but in Hebrew, ve is attached to the word. We love Tel Aviv. Anachnu ohavim et Tel Aviv. And here I put this a, this short a sound, to distinguish it from ohev, it's ohavim. So take that down. Okay, that's the end of this visual presentation. Okay, so now we have a few more minutes um, to answer questions. I won't be able to take all the questions, but if you write some questions in the in the chat or maybe in the Q and A, Allie, which is better? Does does it matter? Um, take a look at the chat. I answered a lot of them in the Q and A, but anyone could raise their hand and I can unmute you as well if that's easier. Um, okay, I, I think it's better that, that people type the the question. That way we won't. Uh... Okay, so I see there's great. Okay, so questions. Um... Okay, so anybody who has a question, please. Oh, it's in the Q&A. Okay, any tips to predict whether a word has an Aleph or an Ayin? Not really. Aleph will be foreign words. I mean, there are a lot of words in Hebrew that have Aleph as well, but if it's a foreign word, it will be Aleph and not Ayin, unless it comes from Arabic or another Semitic language. Um, otherwise, it's kind of arbitrary. You kind of got to need to get a sense of it. Um, is there transliteration? There is no transliteration of this presentation, but in the review materials, there is, uh, there is audio recordings for each individual word. So you'll be able to learn that way, and you'll be able to use the tutorial to learn to read. What is the level of this class? This is the beginner's level. Uh, this assumes no knowledge of Hebrew. Is, poss is it possible to use vowels with all of the Hebrew words? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, is it possible? I mean, all Hebrew words can use vowels, and but we're not we're not going to do that in the presentation. Um, when exactly do you use et? That's tricky. Basically, et is that particle, that word that doesn't exist in English, which indicates doing a specific doing an action on something specific. Like let's say. I'm lifting the cup, right? So I'm doing the action of lifting onto something very specific, the cup, not a cup in the world, but the cup. As any mirim et hakos. Or if I love a place, a place is something very specific. So ani ohev et Tel Aviv, ani ohev et Miami. Are men et prepositions? Yes, English teacher. Right, shmot yachas. Um, what, why would you say anachnu instead of anu? Anachnu is what people normally say. Anu is not in everyday speech, even though it's easier to say than anachnu. Uh, it, it appears in poetry. It appears in texts. 
but in everyday speech, people just use anachem. Um, can we help you arrange a study buddy um, to practice during the week? Uh, I don't know, maybe nefesh ben nefesh, I don't know. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, arrange study buddies, but we do have uh, a community of people learning Hebrew together, so you may be able to find somebody through our community. Okay, say and write welcome again. Okay, so I'm not going to write it again, but I will say it again. Uh, actually, no, I can answer by text, so why not? Bruchim habayim. Bruchim habayim. How to understand not putting in is our... Okay, it just doesn't exist in Hebrew. There is no is. There is no to be in the present tense, really. We just don't use it. Just like English has is and are, and Hebrew has it, they just don't translate. Um, uh, okay, are you guys all female and mixed gender? Yeah, atem is all male or mixed gender. If it's all females, then the m at the, at the end becomes n, aten. Okay. Uh, will there be a follow on to these first lessons? Each week is a separate topic and assumes no prior knowledge. So, um, so it's not really a follow up, but you will have an advantage if you do take, if you took this class, you'll be able to, the next class will probably be a little easier. Um, how do you know whether it's me or me? Um, it's really, it goes down, it boils down to what is more comfortable to say. And that's also historically true. Like it used to be, words used to be pronounced a little bit differently. So some words get me and some words, some words get me. Um, generally, if it's a vowel after me, then it becomes e, like me efo instead of mi efo. Like let's say uh, Indiana, ani, instead of saying ani mi Indiana, I would say ani me Indiana. So those are a couple of rules of thumb. Um, I think they mean vowel points. Oh, using vowel points throughout. Um, yeah, we we don't <clears throat> we don't do that because because we want people to be able to read texts that are that are printed like the newspaper, which doesn't have vowels. Only children's books and prayer texts and lit liturgical and religious texts tend to have vowels um, and poetry. But besides that, everyday Hebrew on the street street signs also sometimes, but uh, of, oftentimes they don't have vowels, so we want to train people as early as possible not to, to read without vowels. Okay. The difference between, oh, okay, the lines, the ah sound. If there's two dots next to it, it's really there for historical reasons. It doesn't have a bearing on pronunciation today. Um, it, similar to the English the, in a way, Yes, um, because the makes something very specific. So there is a relationship there. It's not exactly the same thing. Because the URL you will get for, uh, you will get in the email. Okay. Um, how do I suggest to record the Hebrew spelling? I'm not sure what that means. What do you mean? What, what? Uh, Svetlana, what do you mean by that? Okay, so maybe we'll get back to you. Um, how do you learn to read without the vowels? Um, context. It's, the way to read without the vowels is to get to know the words first. That's why we, we start with the, the audio, the, the speaking and listening portion, so that you know words, you're able, to, you're, you're able to say them. And then once you see them in context, you figure out what they're supposed to say. That's, the, that's how Hebrew is read without vowels, by context. Kind of like the English word read and read, it's really, it's R-E-A-D, but it's pronounced either read or read, depending on what it is in the sentence. I read the book yesterday versus I read every day. 
same printing, different pronunciation, depending on context. Um, okay, so that's, that's all for now. Um, Ali, do you want to have any, say any final remarks? Yeah, thank you so much. I hope you guys learned a lot from this class. As Ami mentioned, we do offer this class every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Israel time. We will have different topics every week, but it's definitely important to join each one if you can or watch the recording to kind of stay up to date and really practice your Hebrew. If you do have any questions that weren't able to be answered, feel free to send me an email. Um, I'll put it in the chat box right now. But just as a reminder, you will all be receiving the recording and a helpful link to go through kind of a review of everything that was covered. There's some games on there for you guys to really practice your Hebrew. And for anyone who felt like they can maybe try the intermediate class, I highly suggest joining. It's gonna start in about 15 minutes. I also put the link um, in the chat box. So feel free to log in to join and we'll either see you in 15 minutes or we'll see you next week. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.